It is so <laughs> good. Writer, star, executive producer, he's made the tea, he swept up afterwards. <laughs> uh, John Favreau joins us now. It's lovely Hi, to see you. Thank you. Doing? How did I miss the cooking segment? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we'll look, save some for good. you. Yeah, we yeah, can always bring coconut some back rice, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> well done for watching. Um, so, back to that day. Uh, you're 11. Um, it's 1977. You go to the movies and tell us what happened. I, you know, now we look back at Star Wars nostalgically, but at the time it was mind-blowingly technical and the visual effects were so innovative. And uh, it was such a simple story that was told in a way that young people could appreciate it, but with all the detail and complexity mm -hmm. of, a, of a big Hollywood production. So I, like many of my generation, were completely enthralled with it. And that's before you had all of this competition for your attention. So you'd keep going back to the movie theater, you'd play with the toys, you waited for the sequel to come out, the sequels were great. Mm. So it was something that I think captivated all of us. And now that I'm at this point as, as a, as a grown-up yeah. in my career, getting to play in this universe that George Lucas created has been just a, just been a, a, a delight. Your younger self would be so impressed with you. I, would, I wouldn't even think I could even have been an actor. Yeah. That was so out of reach. I was in, uh, you know, in, in Queens, which is outside of the, you know, outside of Manhattan, and I didn't even know anybody in the entertainment business. Mm. So this would have been acting was a hobby. It's something you did after school, mm -hmm. you know, you did a play. But that I can make a living at all the things that I love to do, even if I wasn't getting paid for it, is just a dream. Well, by true. the third movie, I right. think you were an usher in the. I was. That's yeah. right. So you get oh, to good. see them over and over again. Yeah, I, when I was in high school, I was I was at one of those old movie palaces, and and I was there seating people and taking tickets and. And Return of the Jedi That's was a great there. place to 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 see the movies. It's great. I've really gotten to have every experience in the movie business, from being an usher to a, a extra, yeah, all the way through supporting player and then uh, director and writer. So, what did you want to be at that stage? At that stage of my life, yeah, I didn't know. Uh, you know, you did. You didn't. Where I'm from, you didn't really think about a career as something where you were going to be living your dreams. It was. How am I going to make a living? How, you know, you saw how people worked around you. From time to time, I, I wanted to be a, a firefighter as I got older, took the test to do that. I didn't know. I didn't really have a direction. And then when I was in my early 20s, I, I, I took a cross-country trip, which made me realize that I, I wanted to go for something more. And I started doing comedy. I moved to Chicago, which has great, great tradition of comedians and improvisation. And I just started learning. And I was... Uh, Worked at the Second City as a, as a dishwasher and as a, also as an usher. And I got to watch incredible talents on, on stage like Mike Myers and Chris Farley. They were all just coming up at the time. And, uh, and you learn by watching and, yeah. and you start to say, maybe I could do this. So when it came to Mandalorian and obviously being a sort of massive fan of this franchise from being a kid, you don't mm -hmm. want to let the inner kid down. You want no. to stay quite true and well, very, very yeah. true to the, to the original. And, and this is very influenced by it. I mean, even sort of repurposing yeah. of props and yeah, costumes exactly. and things like that. Yeah, because originally George Lucas, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, 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 you know, shot it here in London, right, originally. Didn't have a lot of money. Mm. Was, you know, we think of it as a big uh, hit, but at the time it was a very experimental film. Yeah. And he was able to use old props from old World War II films uh, and, and repurposing them to turn the, the, the guns into blasters and oh, right. repurposing uniforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an expression called kit bashing where you take pieces of different models and, and, and combine them to create spaceships. Uh -huh. And so we try to keep that aesthetic alive and that's part of what unifies all the Star Wars stories that you see now as we all aspire oh, to that wow. same visual aesthetic. But at the same time, and also Industrial Light and Magic, which I think has yeah. got one of the best names for any company in the world, that says it all. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, sort of that Lucas-inspired mm -hmm. uh, way of working, taken to the nth degree now with the volume. Yes, that's right. So here you have this incredible studio, um, and th there's a there's a shot of it there. It, it, it's capable of casting shadows yes. onto the yes. onto the actors. It creates it's interactive net. light and reflections because remember our character is uh, silver, so you see everything. So much like what you, I don't want to blow the illusion, but much like what you have here, there's a lot of technology surrounding you, and we just took things that are already being used in these types of capacities and taking it using a lot of technology associated with virtual reality and gaming and creating backgrounds that actually move as the camera does to create depth. So and so it allows us to make a show in a year, a film that would take several years, and, mm -hmm. and, and we do about two or three times as much 
length as a movie would be. So it's very ambitious, and thanks to technology, we're able to deliver that mm. level of quality. Um, George Lucas came down to set. Yeah. How was that? I mean, that must have been mad. Well, he has a, uh, you know, a lot of people we work with have worked with him on the prequels and yeah. such, and Dave Filoni, my partner, uh, uh, worked with him on the Clone Wars. And, and so he came down, Kathy Kennedy brought him down, and uh, that's when we were filming the first season. And a hush fell over the... I bet. Because, you know, we're all working on Star Wars and it's, it's exciting and delightful, but George hasn't been directly involved with it mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in quite some time. And so for him to come down and sit and watch and, yeah. and, uh, and put everybody at ease, really, was, uh, was wonderful. He's, he's been back a few times and we've gone to visit him and he's been very gracious with his input yeah. and, mm. and guidance. Nice. Well, you're, yeah. obviously your pedigree for him, for someone who was going to take it to the next uh, stage has got to be huge. I mean, amazingly successful director, sort of Elf, Iron Man, Jungle Book, Lion King, um, Spider-Man, obviously you're in Spider-Man, Happy Hogan. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those things combined and with the pedigree that you've got and the Marvel work that you've done, there must have been a moment when he walked onto the set for the first time, regardless of what you have got mm -hmm. in your locker, mm -hmm. you must have thought, oh my God, look where I am. Well, yeah, right. Your childhood memories really—you never, you never outgrow them. And so, when you meet somebody like that, and who that, you know, what he represented, and all the things that he created and did, and and he inspired me not just through Star Wars, but all of the influences that he had. I ended up following up on, like Joseph Campbell for anthropology, Akira uh, Kurosawa as directors, John Ford. Everything that inspired him were things that I then pursued and learned from. So I'm very heavily influenced by, uh, by his legacy. Well, you're going to influence yourself many, many more, that's for sure. And quite rightly, last week, you've got your own star on the Hollywood yes, Walk of Fame, right. which is so incredible. Well done. Um, and there you are. Look, we there can see is. you putting it there. You said when you did that, you no longer feel like an outsider. It's true, because you, you, uh, so much of your uh, career in entertainment is yeah. just trying to get the opportunity to make a, a living at it. And, and it always feels precarious, right? You always feel like you're... A, a couple bad projects away from having to find another career. And, and now I'm, you know, at, at the point where I'm mentoring other people where I can create my own uh, uh, working environments through the things that I write. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's, uh, it hits a level of, uh, you, you, you start to feel a little bit easier in your, in your own skin and knowing that, that this is what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Well, I mean, it's a, what a wonderful feeling to something that you loved so much as a kid, the, the, the Star Wars Lucas universe. You mm -hmm. get to colour in other bits mm -hmm. that we haven't seen before in a way that we haven't seen before. And you've already written um, season. The next season, yeah. We have to prepare a lot for these visual effects. So, so. I suppose because you know where it's going to go. So I, we write everything. And fortunately, you know, we've kind of um, ad ad adopted uh, adapted the model that that you've been doing here for a long time, which is fewer episodes of shows. Uh, you know, in, in the states, it used to be you do 22, yeah. 23 episodes. You'd be you'd be lucky if you had a couple scripts ahead. But the idea of having a you know a, a more closed ended, thoughtful presentation in, in the mm -hmm. television medium allows us to write the scripts as you would a film mm -hmm. and prepare heavily. And that, that way you ensure quality. They must the quality. have been thrilled you said, they said yes to you when you hit them with that idea. Uh -huh. They must yeah, have been yeah. thrilled. Thank God we trusted in this. Yes. Um, it's lovely to see you. Thank you yeah, so cheers. much. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Mandalorian Series 3, Disney Plus on March the 1st. Thank you.